if uh, I might, the message we talked about uh, this morning. And if you will remember, uh, this morning we spoke to you from 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter, uh, the chapter is number 2. The chapter is number 2 and the verse is what? Number 19. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 19. Uh, this is where Paul writes to the young man Timothy. And he says to the young man Timothy, The foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth those that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. In other words, God knows the folk that are his. We don't, he doesn't have to doubt you. See, God doesn't have to write stuff down. He knows the beginning from the end. And the end from the beginning. So God doesn't have to write anything down. So he knows those that he... Another question that was on the floor this morning was God's law of inclusion. God's law of inclusion. What is... God's law of inclusion, and I did not finish it this morning, and I shall, uh, of course, try uh, my uh, best to uh, finish up, if you can put it on the pulpit, please. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you, my brother. Uh, I'm going to ask the church, is that board clean? Yes, sir. Is clean? <laughs> All right. All right. Do we have chalk? We do have chalk? All right, well, bring me some chalk, Michael. Yeah, you have to get, I mean, how many folk do you need to screw in a light bulb here? Um, thank you, Michael. All right. Thank you very much. Now, so the question becomes, uh, how does one get oneself included in God's divine plan of blessing. How does one do that? Now, we, 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 we tried to show this morning that there were certain postulations that I was using to make sure you understood it, and I gave you uh, three or four interrogatives this morning uh, that were designed to sharpen the focus and get you to see uh, how, uh, how that was how that was done. One of the uh, interrogatives was, whom does God include in his divine plan? Whom does God? See, God doesn't include everybody. No, no, he doesn't include everybody. Uh, because he, and I quoted for you this morning. Jesus says, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and, you see, so those who don't do, don't get included. You see? So, uh, and, and then the Bible declares in Hebrews chapter 5 and uh, verse number uh, 7 and 8, uh, the Bible is clear on it. Uh, the Bible talks about Jesus Christ, the matchless uh, Son of God. And, he, and uh, the, the Hebrew writer uh, says, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered, being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. So then whom does God include? All right. Uh, God only includes those who obey him. That, that's all that he includes. Those who obey him. Why is this question central? Why is this question important? Why do you as a child of God need to know? Why do you need to know how to explain it? Because of the fact it goes to the question of eternity. Because there will be folk who will stand before God in the final roundup of human affairs and not go to heaven because they didn't know how to get included in God's plan, a divine plan of blessing. And so the question becomes, how does one become included in God's eternal plan. Now there are three interrogatives I gave you. And that was, whom does God include? 
And, and the second, of course, was how does God in fear hit me out? How does God uh, include one? And the last one was, there you go. Now, if you can answer those three questions, and then uh, when I finish, if you're able to answer maybe any one of those, then I think that the message was a success. That is God's law of inclusion. How does God include us? To do that, I showed you Old Testament uh, examples. And the reason I showed you Old Testament examples is because the Holy Spirit said that the things that were written aforetime was written. That, that's why it was written. That's why it was written. I don't need you on me. I need you on the board. I need you on the board. Just stay on the board. All right, now, uh, the things that was written aforetime was written for our learning. Which means, if you want to clearly understand, if you want to clearly understand the New Testament, you need a knowledge of the Old Testament. Because the Old Testament was the New Testament congeal. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. So we need, we need to uh, understand that. The Old Testament was the New Testament unfulfilled. New Testament is the Old Testament fulfilled. You see, and we can go on and on with those platitudes. But, uh, so it's important. I showed you uh, two examples. One was the 21st chapter of the book of Numbers where, we, where the Bible makes clear that Israel had been bitten by some fiery serpents. And we saw in the personality of God we saw in the personality of God uh, 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 these three things. And that is, first of all, we see whom God includes by what God did and what the condition of the people were. When you look at the people, they had been bitten by some fiery, a uh, fiery, poisonous snakes. They needed a blessing from God. They needed to be healed. Now how is God going to do that? That's the question. How is God going to do it? Well, uh, the first one is, uh, whom does God include? God includes everyone who seek by faith diligently his will and his salvation. God, Paul said, wants all men saved. Jesus says go into all the world. So God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit wants all men saved. So whom does God include? God includes all of them that meets the requirement of eligibility to be saved. Then as whom? How does he do it? Two ways. There are two ways. How does he do it? Number one, God makes an offer. And after God makes the offer, God gives a command as to how and to what it takes to receive the offer. Those who need the offer, those who need the healing, those who need to get in, must then, once God gives the order, once God gives the command, then those who need to be saved must decide whether or not they want to demonstrate their faith in God by obedience to what God has required. Now, uh, crucial to that is this. Because this destroys, you see, this, if you understand that, you will then clearly understand how man cannot be saved and would not be saved, and God would not save a man by faith alone. When God told Israel through the prophet Moses, make a brazen serpent out of brass. Put him on a pole and tell the folk to look. Now I am sure that 
those who wanted to be healed believed. When, listen to this, when God gave the order, the snake had not been made, the pole has not been lifted. God gave the order. And when God gave the offer, the folk had to believe. And then when the pole and the snake went up, they looked and they lived. But the reason for them living is because their faith was demonstrated. At the time, God gave the command. They had faith. But faith alone won't heal them. When, they, when Moses made the snake, put him on a rod, they still had faith. When the rod was put in the ground and the snake raised up, they still had faith. But they would never be healed until they looked. Because faith alone will not save, cannot save, without further acts of obedience. You see? Cannot, cannot save. So faith alone will not, will not save you. The devils had faith. So faith alone won't, won't save. It has to be further acts of obedience. Now, the story I gave you of, uh, of uh, Joshua... In, in, in Joshua chapter number 6, I gave you that story. Israel is fighting a battle. They need to get into Jericho. But God says Jericho was strictly shut up. Nobody could get in. Nobody could get out. But Israel had to destroy Jericho. And so... God said to Israel, I got an offer for you. The offer is the walls of Jericho is going to come down. They're going to come down. And you're going to be able to go in the city and destroy everything in that city. The king, the children, the, 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 the wives, women, you're going to be able to do that. But now the walls are up. But God said to to Israel, the walls are going to come down. At that point, Israel, Joshua, believed God. At that point. But the walls didn't come down. At that point. Even though they had faith. At that point. And so then, God I gave a command uh, to walk around the walls. First day they walked, had faith. Second day they walked, faith. Third day, every day they walked, they demonstrated their faith. But your faith is going to have to include everything God did. Not just some of it. And even when you get there on the seventh day, walls still stand. But the fact that they've been walking means that they had faith. But those walls are not going to fall until they have done everything that God said. You're not saved just by having faith. Because faith alone will not save. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 30. When did Israel, when did God include Israel in his divine plan? When did he do it? Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 30. The Bible says what? Watch this. By. You know why we at that? Let me show you, let me show you something. Why we at that? I just heard him say by faith. And then, then the bell starts going off. Uh, 11 chapter of the book of Hebrew. Well, you can put it up there, uh, preacher or uh, 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 Preston, whichever you want. The 11th chapter 
of, of the book of Hebrew. I want to show you something here because when you said just him saying by faith, bells went off. That's the way it is with an old preacher. I want to show you something. Faith at all does not save, cannot save, and it doesn't matter what any preacher says. Now, television evangelists will tell you all you have to do is just believe in Jesus. Call on his name and he'll save you. The Bible does not teach it. Never has taught it. Because faith doesn't work that way. Now, here's what I want you to do. Uh, I, I want you to read Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 4. I want you to give me the first two words of verse number four. By faith. There you go. By faith. And then the Bible says what? Abel uh -huh. offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than uh -huh. Cain. Go and read. By which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Yes. God testifying of his gift. Yeah. And by it he being dead yet speaketh. God bless Abel. The Bible says, how did he do it? By faith. By faith alone. It's right there in the verse. By faith, Abel. Offer. Offer. Not by faith alone. That fella had to offer to God. Because we're not saying, and, and, and why are you acting this way? <laughs> this is getting good. Look, verse number five. Verse five says what? By faith. By faith, Enoch was translated yes. that he should not see death. Yes. And was not found yes. because God had translated him. Yes. For before his translation. But before his translation. He had this he testimony. He had this testimony. That he pleased God. Not just faith. You got to please God. Yeah. Oh, this is good stuff. Um, verse number seven. What verse seven? By faith. By faith. North being warned of God of yes. things not seen as yet. Did faith didn't know how faith? Yes, he had faith. But he had something else too. The Bible said what? Being faith, not warned of God of things not seen he as moved. yet. With fear. With fear. Prepared and not. Prepared and not. Not just having faith. If Noah had faith in God, but he had to build an ark. That's yes, by faith. Praise the name of Jesus. Uh, look at verse number eight. Verse number eight says what? By faith, Abraham. By Abraham had faith. When he was called to go out into a place. Yeah. Which he should offer after receive for an inheritance. What did he do? Obeyed. Obeyed and. And went out. Went out. Not, not knowing whether he went. Faith. And not just having faith. Yeah, when, when, when God tells you what to do, you must believe it. But you must have the kind of faith that moves you. Or you will never get in his will. You will never be included in his will. Verse number nine. By faith. What did he do? He sojourned in the, he land, sojourned of in the land of promise. And is in a strange country. country. Dwelling in the dwelling tabernacle, in tabernacle with, with Isaac, Isaac and Jacob. And Jacob. The heirs with the him with him the, the same, same promise. promise. What did he do? For he looked for, for a city. He looked for a city. Which had foundation. Which had foundation. Whose builder and maker is God. and maker is God. He didn't just have faith. You say so faith, faith alone won't save you. But now you read me the 30th verse because that's what I asked for five minutes ago. By but faith? Then, watch, watch this. We, see, we, I know where I was. I was talking about Joshua. You thought I forgot it, but I didn't. Joshua believed God. The people marched around the wall six and seven days. But the walls didn't fall. But my text, my, my, my sermonic question is, when? Does God include? The Bible says what? By faith the walls of Jericho fell By down. By faith. Watch this. The walls of Jericho did what? Fell down. Fell down. After they were After. <laughs> oh, I can quit right there. I don't have to go no further. 
them walls didn't fall in the wind. After. You can have all the faith you want, but it, it takes more than just faith. It's what you going to do. Yeah, I get it. That's a good place to stop right there. But now, 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 now that's, that's, that's where we were this morning. Now, now, it brings us to where we are tonight. My time is gone, but that's okay. Uh, there's one other example, and the example is named in 2 Kings chapter number 5. 2 Kings chapter number 5 and verse number 1. 2 Kings. Uh, if you'll get over, if y'all have put that up there, 2 Kings chapter 5. And verse number 1. The Bible said, Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor. But, Lord have mercy. Have you all ever heard that before? Yes, sir. You know, he's a good preacher, but. Oh, he's a good song leader, but. You know, well, he's a good husband, but. You know, oh, she's all right, but <laughs> the Bible says, Naaman, I was a great man, the Bible says, but he was an upper. Now, uh, uh, to hasten on, he, he, uh, going down to about verse 10, and I think we may be able to pick up uh, part of this story in verse number 10 of Second Kings chapter 5. The Bible says, Elijah said, Elijah said, yeah, uh, Naaman went to uh, the home of Elijah because that was the prophet of God. And he went there because his little maiden had told him there was a man in Israel that could cure him of his leprosy. So he shows up at the house of the prophet. And Elijah sent a message. And the prophet of God didn't even come out the house. Naaman rode up in all of his horses and all in his chariot and all his fine stuff. And, and, and men, you know, and all his chariots, you know, and, and, and all that pomp and circumstances. Uh, at, the, at the house of the prophet and the prophet didn't even come out. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. You, know, you ever got all dressed up you know going somewhere and then it starts storming outside. You know. Or you get all dressed up and they got nowhere to go. I mean you know how they feel walking around the house all dressed high heel shoes, stilettos you know. <laughs> you ain't got nowhere to go. Praise the name of Jesus. And you got on a formal gown, you know, and all them little things, silhouettes and all that. Where are you going? Oh, I'm just trying some stuff on. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Uh, but there are folk like that, you know. But we pray for them. Now, uh, the man of God came to the home of the prophet, and the prophet didn't even come out. What's wrong with Naaman? Naaman has leprosy. What does Naaman want? Naaman wants God to include him in his blessings. That's what he wants. He wants to be included. Well, how does God include? God includes by making an offer. God includes by giving a command. And you get in by believing it and doing it. Don't forget that because that answers my question. But now anyway, the, 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 what the Bible says, the Bible says that... Uh, and Elisha sent a message unto him saying, go and wash in Jordan seven times. God made an offer. I don't, uh, I don't have to come out there. I got a word for you. Go wash in Jordan seven times. And thy flesh shall come again to thee. And thou shalt be clean. You see that? You want the blessing? Go down there and dip in, in Jordan. But Jordan was dirty. You see? God doesn't change his order because you don't like it. God doesn't change his order because you don't see it. Because I don't see that. You ain't supposed to see it. You ain't supposed to say, well, I just, Doc, I just don't see that. I understand. <laughs> Ain't no argument. I understand why you don't see it. I'm not mad at you. Not mad at you. Folk have told me that all, all, all across the country. Doc, I don't see it like that. Well, I, I understand. Because some things you ain't supposed to see. It, it took me 40 years to see it. 
And you ain't going to see it in one night. Praise the name of Jesus. And so, uh, name one wanted to be included. So God says, now, I'm going to give you an offer. What is the offer, God? The offer is going down to Jordan. Going down to Jordan. That's the offer. Go down to Jordan. But it's dirty. I don't care how dirty it is. Go to Jordan. What's the command? God offers God command. What's the command, Lord? Dip seven times. Well, why seven? Because God said seven. Yeah, that's what I said. Well, why didn't he say five? Ain't none of you. Ain't none of you. Ain't none of you. Ain't none of your business. God said seven times. Now, Naaman got mad. Naaman got mad. What does the next verse say? The next verse says what? But Naaman was wrought. Uh, but, but, fellas, uh, next verse, chapter 11. Uh, go ahead, Keith. What does it say? But Naaman was wrought. And what happened? And went away. Why? And said, Behold, I thought. You see that? I thought. I thought that one church was as good as another. I thought. Uh, uh, you, you know, being a, in the church don't make no. I thought you could take communion anytime you want. I thought. I'd go to heaven and mama's church. I thought. Being sprinkled was just as good as being, I thought. But I read to you this morning, God says, my thoughts. Not your thoughts. My ways. Not your ways. I'm not your ways. What you, I thought. You, who, who is you that's be thinking? And then God gave him an analogy. For as high as the heaven are above the earth, so are my ways above your ways. So God said, go on down there and dip. And the Bible said, the fellow thought, he said, behold, I thought. He would do what? He would surely come out to and me do what? and stand and do what? And call on the name of the Lord, and do his what? God, yeah. and strike his hand over my, the place yeah. and recover the leper. Yeah, like they do on TV. <laughs> like they do on TV. Put the hand in. If I was a, if I was a crook, let me I could make some money behind that. Oh yeah, I could make some. Y'all could do it, Booker. Oh man, I, I got the thing to do that with. Yeah, but I'd go to hell, though. You know what I'm saying? And I'd rather not go to hell. Yeah, I'd rather not go to hell. But man, I could I could do that, man. Would you come on up here? Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Here's what I want you to do. Here's what, oh, I could get that thing going. And I said, that'd be $25. You can give it to me in cash. I don't take checks. <laughs> but that would not be like God would want you to do it. Yeah, that'd be, that, 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 that's not the way God wants you. But I thought that's what he would do. Strike his hand over the place and become, and it's amazing how you watch TV and watch them fellas slap folk upside the head. I was coming on the day, listening to my radio, and um, the lady up there just lied. She said, oh, you know, I didn't have no, I ain't have no job. It, I, can't y'all get somebody on the radio who can talk? I mean, why do you always got to be somebody from the ghetto? You know what I'm saying? I didn't have no job, and, and man, because they, they didn't throw me out, they didn't throw me out my house. Uh, I still had the house, but didn't have no money. And you know, in three days after the bishop, uh, after the bishop gave me that water, three days I got a check with so many zeros on it. I never seen that many zeros before. Say why? Well, how how you know it was a check? <laughs> but 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 that's what he thought. You see, that's what he thought. He thought. Then that's what he would do. And then the Bible says what? Are not Abner and far, far rivers of Damascus didn't he better want, than all the water? Didn't even want to go down to the joy because it's dirty. But God commanded. God made an offer. God gave a command. And if you want to be included in God's plan, you got to do what he says. 
You got to do what he said. I don't care whether or not you say, I don't, that don't make, don't make no, never mind. If you want to go to heaven. You know, and many times, you know, people, uh, and I'm doing that on Sunday, right? This will be in the lesson on Sunday morning. Uh, I'll bring this out in the lesson on Sunday morning. And that is, you know, a folk have their eye on the wrong thing. You know, you, you need to have your eye on Jesus. You know what I'm saying? When you come to church, you're not, you, you're, you, you know, you be looking at other folk. Your, your eye should be on Jesus. You see, and as I said this morning, Peter said, nevertheless, Lord, at your will, at your word, I'll do it. I may not understand it, but I'll do it. You see what I'm saying? I may not like it, but I will do it. It may not make sense, but I will do it. Well, why you will do it? Because the Lord wants me to do it. You see? But this fellow didn't do it. And as a result, the Bible says, to make a long story short, he did go down to Jordan. And when he got down to Jordan, the Bible said he dipped seven times. But after the sixth time, he still had the leprosy. Because God said seven. You see? So then, how to, uh, how to get included? Uh, in the New Testament, I only got one verse. I only got one verse to give you because time and prudence does not allow me to give you any more than that. I only have one verse to give you. Uh, and that's the 16th chapter of the book of Mark. Mark the 16th chapter is enough to show how God includes people in his will. How does God include folk today? And if you're a sinner, if, you, if you're with us tonight and you're a sinner, God makes an offer. And then God gives a command. And then your job is to obey what God says. You see, in the 16th chapter of the book of Mark, Mark the 16th chapter and the 16th verse, and I may have done this before, but it doesn't change. I'm sorry, over here you don't even see it. Yes, you do, it's on the board. All right. Uh, the 16th chapter of the book of Mark, I, that's just, I could, you know, I could go to Matthew 28, 19 and, uh, and 20. Uh, I could go to uh, John chapter 1 and verse number 29. I could go uh, to Luke 24, 46, 47. I could go to Acts chapter 2 and verse number 3. I could go to Acts chapter 8 and verse number 36. I could go to Acts chapter 12 and verse 12. I could go to Acts 16 and verse 32. I could go to Acts 22 and verse 16. I could go to Galatians 3. 26 27. I could go to Romans chapter 6, verse 1 to 4. I could go to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. But I don't have that kind of time. So I just use I, I just use Mark chapter 16 and verse number 16. And, and I think I can show in this one verse the argument that I'm trying to make. Well, what's the argument you're trying to make, Brother Preacher? And that is God will include you in his plan if you obey. And and, and you know, it's a flip side to this. You say, well, a doc, you're preaching to the world. No, I'm not either. I'm trying to give you an example of what happens with God. You see, because uh, this can apply to us too. Yeah, God commands us as children of God. He gives, he gives us an offer. And he makes a command. And our job is to obey his command. You see, but then he said, Mark 16, 15, 16, what does the Bible say? He that believeth. No. Uh, Mark chapter 15, you got the right place and you're reading the right verse. But let me hear verse 15. Verse 15. And he said unto them, What did he say? Go ye into all the world. Go into all the world and what? And preach the gospel to every creature. That's the offer. That's the offer. That's a worldwide offer. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now that's, you see how this thing come together? That is the offer. But now here comes the command. And the command is, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. There it is. Yes, sir. <laughs> there it is. There it is. And you got to do it just like he says. Yes, just like those folk had to march around this seven days, and in the seven day march around seven days. You got to do it like he said. It can't be no uh-oh. You got to do it exactly like he said. Well, what did he say? Because you see, uh, the Baptist church teaches and most denomination teaches, he that believe is saved and baptized because he's already saved. Yeah. Denomination teaches that a man is saved when a man believes he's saved and he's baptized because he's already saved. Which means baptism doesn't really have anything to do with it. And if, the, if Israel had decided that the seventh day didn't matter, the walls never would have fallen. 
you see, never would have fallen. And, and so it's important. And, and, and then the Bible says he, let me just diagram this for you. He, I'm going to diagram that for you. He shall be saved. Now, he shall be saved. Shall be saved is what we call in English the main verb, or it is the principal sentence. All right, this is the principal sentence, shall be saved. That's God's offer. This is God's offer. What is God's offer? Salvation. That's God's offer. Now, let's take a look at it. And let's show you how this is a damnable doctrine. Well, anyway, now, he shall be saved. Shall be saved, in English, is the principal sentence, and it is the main verb. So we put principal, that's the principal sentence. Now, he, usually he is a noun of masculine gender. Because when you say he, usually you're talking about a man, right? I don't know why y'all got quiet on that. Uh, so, 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 the noun he is usually a noun of masculine gender. But in this case, it is a noun of common gender. Now, common gender means any he, which would include women as well. In other words, this he is a noun of common gender, which allows women to be included. So if a woman would do what God says, she shall be saved. If a man does what God says, he shall be saved. So this is a noun of common gender. Now, not only is that a noun of common gender, but what we see here is something else. Well, what is the something else? The something else is we have down here a restrictive, a restrictive clause. And that restrictive clause is there for the purpose of limitation. This restrictive clause in here limits to whom salvation is to go. The restrictive clause tells us who God will include. So then the Holy Spirit put in here a restrictive clause. Clause. Once we get the restrictive clause in, then my question has been answered. Who will God include? The, the, the third part of my, uh, my discussion of my topic will be answered, and that is when does God include? First, who? Watch the restrictive clause. That believeth and is all you get it. You see? Now that's the restrictive clause. What does restrictive clause mean? That is, it is limited. Not only is it limited, but it describes who the he is. Oh, y'all ain't getting this right. Well, what he are we talking about? We are talking about the he that believes and is baptized. Well, what will happen to that he shall be saved? You see? Now, in English, baptism, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Salvation is always put after baptism, not before. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now, what? 
What the world says is, he that believes is saved and baptized because he's already saved. In other words, they move the S and put it in the middle. But you can't change God's plan. And if you want to be included in God's plan, you have to do it exactly like God said. Now that's the English. But they say, well, uh, uh, you can be saved before you're baptized. No, you can't. Because salvation is always at the end. And the reason I know that the English uh, rendering of this is correct, because the Greek rendering is the same thing. Now here's the Greek rendering of that same verse. The Greek rendering of that same verse. He that believeth, don't have enough board, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now here's, here's the Greek rule that governs Mark 16. This is the English rule that governs Mark 16. Now the Greek rule that governs God, Mark 16 is that belief, belief is an a oris, and you can worry about it, it, it is an a oris active present participle. That's what the Greeks say. And then baptized is an aorist passive present participle. That's what the Greek says. Now, what is the rule then that governs aorist participles? What is the rule? Here is the rule. The rule that governs aorist present participles, both active and passive, says that aorist participles must also and always precede the main verb and is never subsequent to the main verb. What the Greek said. Now, how, how does that make sense, Doc? This is your main verb. Shall be saved. That's the main verb. He that believeth and is baptized are the participles. The Greek says that Aorist participles must also precede the main verb. That means that believe and baptize has to occur before you can enjoy the fruit of the main verb, which is salvation. That means that a man is not saved until he is baptized, and it is at that point that a man or woman become a child of God. You see what I'm saying? So which means that the Greek and the English agree that nobody is saved at the point of faith. Because salvation always comes at the end of baptism. Nobody was ever saved before they were baptized. Because that's not God's order. That's not God's command. Therefore, anybody who participated in that is not included in God's divine plan. Now, I would hope that you understand that and just know that when we quote Mark 16, 15, 16, that's the way it is. You may not can explain all that Greek and English, but that's still the way it is. And you don't need to know that. You don't need to know that. You don't need to, you don't need to know Greek to go to heaven. You don't need to know that to go to heaven. No, sir. Uh, when Jesus says, if a man will bless, the man that hears my word and do them, all you got to do is know what Jesus said and then do it. You say, what kind of uh, church would we have or heaven that we have if everybody under, had to understand Greek before they go to heaven? I mean, that's for those of us who are debaters. That's for those of us uh, who have to defend the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's for those of us who have to fight sin on every level. But all you have to know is what Jesus says. And if you would do that, you'd be saved in the final round of human affairs. Uh, whom does God include? He includes me and he includes you. But now God will exclude too now. He'll exclude. You get tired of God, God get rid of you. 
said, you get tired? I'm tired of going to church. I'm tired of time. Look around. It's church, church, church. Isn't it amazing? I said, make this point. Isn't it amazing how we can just say, you know, every time I look around, it's church, church, church. Every time I look around, it's church, church, church. I am so sick of church, I don't know what to do. Every time I look around, I'm like, church, church, church. Are you coming to the church, church? <laughs> but we never say that about our job. Isn't that, 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 you know, you ever thought about that? I mean, nobody never said, wait, wait, wait. You know, every time you look around, it's wait, wait, wait. Nobody never says that about work. And not only that, but you work in seven, almost seven days a week. And, and worshiping God, basically, publicly, collectively, one time on Sunday. God asked for one day and didn't even ask for all that day. But we still say church, church, every time the church just goes, honey, I am so tired of going out to that church. I mean, I was out there this morning. And Doc preached an hour. And, and some of you sitting here tonight, he said he's going to be sure. That's all, that's all right. I love all y'all too. But you have to, you have to drive your point. There's no need to preach it and don't make something clear yet. You got to make, and if you are here tonight and you want to be saved and you're not a child of God, you want to be included in God's plan, then you need to hear the word of God and you've heard the word of God tonight. You need to believe with all of your heart. You need to repent of all of your past sin, confess his holy name, come down these aisles, let us baptize you for remission of your sins. And then when you're baptized for the remission of your sin, then God will include you. You see, he then includes you in his divine plan of blessings. You see, then you are included in God's blessing plan. Then you are, you don't have to send $25 to T.D. Jakes to get a blessing. You see, once God, listen to, once God includes you, then you have a blessing plan. And it doesn't cost you anything. You see, because the Bible said every good and perfect gift cometh down from above from the father of light in whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning so if you want a blessing plan get included in God's plan yeah. and then God you have blessings every day and if you're here and you want to confess your fault confess sins then we will accept you at this time if you're here this is what we call the invitation don't take it lightly because it may be your last time don't take it. Don't ever take an invitation lightly. I knew what I've, I've been hearing invitation all my life. Yeah, but don't take them lightly now, because that's an opportunity to get right before God. So don't don't take that lightly. This is a serious time. Let us pray that somebody who need to come to Jesus will come. That someone who need to get their lives right with God would do so before it's too late. Let us together stand. While we're standing, the invitation is yours. Let us.